Okay, and welcome to this section on the Kubernetes dashboard. In this section, now that we have set up Kubernetes in AWS, we want to have some kind of visual way of viewing what's going on in our dashboard and maybe perform some administration tasks. The CLI is great, but sometimes having a web UI really helps. So for this purpose, there is the Kubernetes dashboard, and this is a project that is straight on GitHub. It works for any kind of Kubernetes cluster, including the one from EKS, so this is what we'll use. Let's have a quick look on the GitHub first. So this is the Kubernetes dashboard that we'll use, and this is the GitHub page for it. As you can see, this is straight belonging to the Kubernetes project, so this is an official dashboard, and there's quite a few stars on it. If we scroll down, basically, quickly enough, we'll see that the kind of UI we will set up in this course looks just like this. So it's pretty awesome, and you see lots of things. Overall, you can look at the installation instructions here, but we'll be doing this together. So don't worry, no need to read through all of that. But as you can see in the getting started, it recommends you use the kubectl proxy and this is something we'll do. Just an FYI, all the sources will be in the source deploy folder, but don't worry, no need to download. We have everything ready for you already. I just wanted to show you the website just in case you needed to have a quick look. So now this Kubernetes dashboard is going to give us a lot of information about the workload. So anytime we'll do a deployment, we'll see our pods, we'll see our replica sets, and also can switch between different namespaces. So we'll be using namespaces heavily during this course, services, as well as information about your node and the storage, and also usage metrics. So for this though, we need to enable heapster monitoring, but thankfully this is what we're going to do in this section. We can also execute commands and there is a, propel, a proper RBAC permission. So there's access control and roles are applied properly. And so this is the awesome thing is that we'll log in securely using a token and we'll be able to do exactly what we're supposed to be doing. So it's quite secure and what we'll do is quite production ready. So there is different with security level. You can use HTTPS or you can use login by the beer token or you can just use RBAC to define uh, fine grade access to UI components. But so overall we'll use uh, the beer token, but there's just alternatives based on what you prefer. Don't worry, we'll go steps one by one. Now, the dashboard itself, I want to show you what goes on under the hood before we go and apply a lot of configuration. So here is our AWS cloud, and we have a Kubernetes control plane and a bunch of worker nodes, and they communicate one another. So we're going to obviously deploy a Kubernetes dashboard. And so for this, we'll deploy a pod, and this pod will live on one of our nodes, and we'll have all this following capability, a REST endpoint, SSL, and we'll need authentication to access that pod. We're also going to deploy some add-ons, as I said, so heapster, so there will be a heapster pod. And finally, there will be an influx DB pod as well, because heapster needs influx DB to store the metrics. Now, how do we access from our own computer this dashboard? Well, we're going to run the kubectl proxy. And this will basically proxy what we do on our computer straight into the Kubernetes control plane. And from there, what we'll be able to do is just access localhost 8081 to access straight to our Kubernetes dashboard. Just an overview, the hands-on will walk us through this in details. Now for the hands-on, four parts. The first one will create a service account and some RBAC rules. Then we'll deploy the dashboard. Then we'll deploy the metrics add-on. And finally, we'll create a cluster admin account and explore the dashboard. I hope you're excited. Let's go on with the first part.